Hello, I'm Dwight Norris of FishingAtWork.com and in today's video I want to get away from the water and really get more invested on the actual items, i.e. fishing gear, that you'll need when you go out fishing at work. Now, fishing at work can happen before, during, or after work, but generally the time frame that you'll have the most time invested and you'll find it more useful to use is during lunch. I think this will hit the, the broader scope of people and it was my real epiphany that everybody or I believe everybody has a lunch hour or maybe just a lunch half an hour and depending on that time frame you can do something to help brighten your day and since you're here you obviously love fishing so why don't you do that but let it be noted you can do more than just fishing during this time. You can do anything you want to do. It's not just, you know, scrolling through Facebook or doing something on a computer, rolling through Google or looking at Craigslist ads for that next boat you can't afford. I'm guilty of that. But I digress. So let's get started with the inventory. It's kind of lined up right here and it's a, kind of tight. I can almost can't walk around it. So let's start off with what's in my tackle box. Actually I have a couple tackle boxes. Let's start off with what's in my backpack tackle box which is very minimal. If I go away on sequential uh, turns to get stuff and you hear a loud crash or bang, it's just me falling over some fishing stuff. And there are open hooks over here, so hopefully I'm okay. So here's a book bag. You know, simple, cheap. This is a particularly long one. I've had it for a long time. It has little pouches on the side. Useless. Things just fall out of there. Don't try to put anything in there. It's a waste of time. So, inside of here, let's start with the main compartment. What could be in this book bag? Wow. Have you seen... Uh-oh. Let it be known, you shouldn't put hooks in your book bag. Open. Because bad things happen. But this will show you what you can do to get it out. Alright, I'm all clear here. This is my telescoping fishing rod, which I showed you in a previous video. Now, one of the things you should really worry about, and I'm now just discovering this, if you leave it in there for a long time and you don't actually purchase a great fishing rod, it may bend your guides. And bend your guides over time is not a great thing. They tend to fall apart. But I only paid about, what did I pay? Hmm, about $15 for this, you know, standard fare. But I really want to go back and find one that doesn't have this long handle. You can, you can really decrease it a lot. And I don't plan on doing any heavy fishing with this. So I don't need anything this strong. But I have a very high quality Abu Garcia reel in here and it's made to catch bass. I think I overfilled the reel a little bit. But uh, it works and it fits in a book bag so it's a great thing. Right now I have an actual lure in there. You can switch it out and have the live bait. But um, that's good. That is one of the main things you need to do when you go fishing at work is get yourself a telescoping rod with a lightweight reel 
some decently strong lines. I've switched over to braided lines as of recently because I'm just tired of you know, rubbing against rocks and like logs and having it just break off randomly on some small fish and you're like Ugh. more wasted time. Time I could have been fishing. Not good. So what's the next thing? Let me put this down. In a small compartment I have my hooks and stuff. But no box. Not needed. Too heavy, too bulky. So just it, some snail hooks. You can catch the smaller Got the crappies on there, the panfish, bream, and I was trying to catch a, a blueback herring, but apparently they don't like my bait. You have bobbers if you like them. I'm on a river, so these aren't really very good things to have on a river because it'll just make your line float away faster. You want it to stay in one spot, generally. And you should have a bag full of weights. Have a bag here. And pliers. This is a very old set of pliers here. Have you seen have you see there's a there's rust over the whole thing. And this particular plier has this uh, this edge right here, which is flat and it's kind of like a uh, like a scissor-like consistency when it wasn't rusted. Um, but that can help actually snip your line. It works better with monofilament, but with braided lines, I've come into issues with it. And braided lines actually cut better with just scissors. So I'm going to switch to that. And I didn't realize this was still in here, but I cut off my... Uh, my line here when I had to go over to my bait which you saw over there because I forgot my worms that one day so here's the setup simple I have uh, the weight just below the hook which gives me a, a decent amount of uh, space here I don't want to fish on the bottom you know unless you're a fish for a carp or something but I'm not a carp fisherman wouldn't mind catching one, but I don't know, just never, never really got into it. So that's that. What's next? Let's go through my actual tackle box. Don't worry, didn't fall. Not this time. So, this is normally a tackle box, you know, unless you're going out somewhere, but it's always good to have a very, very sharp fly knife. Apparently, didn't clean this one very well. The last thing I used it on was a uh, bluefish that caught in Cape Cod. So, I'm going to leave that out so I can actually clean it. But if you're on site somewhere and let's say you're, you're in an ocean or ah, we, will, we can really be anywhere where you don't have to scale a fish, which is a pain in the butt. And maybe you don't have the space for a, this awesome fish you caught. I mean, you have a little bit of time left, so you pull out your fillet knife, psh, psh, you hit your fillets, you throw them in that Ziploc bag. Wash your hands off, use the uh, use a nice uh, cleaner, and boom, you can go home, throw some uh, throw it in some um, some flour and some seasoning in the fry pan. Remember to put the fry pan cover on so it doesn't splatter everywhere, and leave a window open so it doesn't get into your curtains too much. And boom, you know dinner. Everybody will enjoy it because they aren't cooking and you are. Uh, I used to do a lot of striped bass fishing back in my day, and we used a, a minnow-like lure that was about six inches long, six to seven, maybe eight inches long or so. And th this isn't the particular one we used a lot, but 
we usually used a white one just with a, a gigantic J head an ounce because it was usually um, a river with a very strong current and this is basically what it is but I think I've lost track of my, my white one. It actually might be in my tackle box, but these are two right here. These would look these would work particularly well at night, which is fantastic striped bass fishing. I can't recommend it enough. So I picked up this, uh, this kind of compact um, tackle box. It just holds uh, some kind of trays here. It has uh, the Velcro, it has one side pocket here, but I'll let you know, like you probably just saw, I lost the weight at the bottom because the netting isn't made very well. What's somebody would make stronger netting? So these are just like you know your Plano box. I just have a Plano, and I don't know how to show you this without everything falling out. Oh, also, if you see me like looking off in the direction, I actually have the um, the image of myself talking, and for some reason I'm being drawn toward it. So. I want to do better and focus on the camera. So, this is the weights here. Um, it's my weight selections. I have up to five ounces. I, I'm not sure if I'll even get near that from the shore, but uh, some rivers and the ocean, and some points, you'll need to have a uh, a very large weight, and you should really go down from from five all the way down to probably a half ounce. Half ounce should handle most areas unless uh, unless you're in some crazy fast current. Uh, you're gonna have your, I don't know, I like to call these uh, bullet weights. You can use them when you have your Texas style rigged worm. It's like, it's like a mainstay. You have to have it. You have your X sinkers. I believe they're egg sinkers. I've gotten all the names and terminology. I just know how to use them. And, you know, split shot. If you want to fine tune your bobber or your small live bait, you have some three way swivels. In case you want to do some special rigs and some little jig heads. I, I, I can't say enough for a white grub, uh, like a one in, about a two inch white grub. You put it on here. With a, a light tackle rod and like the crappy, the panfish, when they're feeding, they tear it up. It's, it is awesome. So, yeah, and you want to have a couple of uh, some really big gap uh, hooks for your worms if, you, if you're using big worms. So that's the uh, oh, that's the weights. For some reason it's hard to close all of a sudden. There we go. And my other box holds my actual lures. I could, you could technically put a lure box like this into your your backpack and take it with you, or you know, on on the bus, even on your bike, and obviously in the car. And the only thing really heavy about it is the amount of weights I have in mind. You don't need that many. It's it's this is like a seven or eight pound thing I have going on here, and it's not necessary, but. For some reason, I just can't stop buying fishing stuff when I when I get rolling. So this is really old stuff I have I have here, and a lot of it's the stuff I've caught a lot of things on, and I just 
I'd like to renew some of it. It's probably been aged out like, you know, your old Berkeley Gulp Baits. You know, they had a, a nice flavor for a while, but, you know, after a year or so, it starts to diminish. So, here I have a collection of stuff. I'll just pull it out. I have some spoons. You might need those if you're near like a, uh, the pier wall in, in the ocean if you have access to that. I have some deep dive crankbaits, which are connected to a spoon. <laughs> uh, yeah, everything needs a little bit of work here. Uh, oh, and this is a smaller version of the clear uh, striped bass lure that I'm so used to using over the last, I don't know, how long has it been? 20 plus years? Whew, man. And this is a, uh, hmm, I want to say a buck, a buck weight or something. But um, it has the hairs that come out here, and you can put it on a, like a grub with a, a, a long, like wavy tail, or maybe even a minnow. But I think a, a, a grub with a tail goes well with this. And what it imitates, maybe minnows, maybe a, a squid. I honestly don't know, but I know that <laughs> it catches fish. And apparently I have weights in here too. Wow. Okay. Um, oh, and this is one of the, uh, one of those white tubed things I told you to put on the small jig head, which is what the crappy like. Anything like this. It can be this with the tails. The tails come off really easily when the, when the fish start nipping at it. So I would suggest getting a lot of them. Or you can get the small grubs with the uh, with the, the white grubs with the with the kind of wavy tail. Those work well too. Oh, and uh, here's one right here. Obviously, I have them. And I'm talking about them here, right, like this. This size right here, it, it's like an inch and a half inch. Um, Sorry, getting distracted here. Just jump everywhere. Uh, some lizards here from uh, from Zoom. Everybody knows the Zoom baits. There's one out of the package. Nice lizard. Small ones work a little better. It's like a baby lizard, and the bass just think they can gain, a, gain advantage on them. Yeah, an excellent meal, and they're probably too. This is another bait that I absolutely love. These are like, this, this one's called, it's called a zoom tube, but it's basically a tube bait that has a, uh, an empty center and a wavy tail. And the bass love this stuff. I think this might be so old, maybe it's back. But that's because I haven't been fishing so long. Don't make those mistakes. Get on the water. And, oh yes. Yeah. This is old school. I don't think they even make this anymore. I think it's leaking. This is the Berkeley Power Bait. I'm, they didn't even make this anymore, but it looks perfectly fine. It's just like the uh, the gold baits that you make now, which are for I think they're mainly for ocean. But um, this is for fresh water and obviously for bass. Oh yeah, it looks like I have more. This is a uh, yum bait switches. This is more for the ocean as well. It's an added attractant. Let's wait again. about this reminds me that I need to do, to do some work here with my tackle organization. What's next? Let's get this party rolling. All right. Um, yes, I have a bag of goodies. That's what I'll call it. Stuff I've purchased. 
from page shop. So, actually, I want to talk about this. When you go to page shop, you'll probably see that there's three books there. Either salt order or fresh order, depending on where you are. And you'll be amazed at the valuable content within there. So, let me show you one thing. One is this thing called, for this, I think this is the spring edition, is Access Sites. Let me see here if I can get it lined up right. Access Sites. And it shows everything in my area. So there is the North Shore and the South Shore. And here is Boston and, oh, Castle Island. I was just there about a couple days ago. And what it tells you is what kind of access you can get in that location to go fishing. So when it comes to ocean, it's really good to know where you can go before. If you can't see it on a map, you might show up there and like there's like a, a new building that wasn't there on a the map or there's like a gate up and you know, a gate doesn't show well from a, a downward facing uh, camera from space. And so you know like, ah, oh, I rode all the way over here and I can't even get in. It's private. Crap. But here it shows you there's a jetty, which I saw myself, which is where most people are actually catching the fish. And there's a pier too, which I went on, and I took a couple casts, but it really wasn't far out, and it was a lot of boat traffic there, and I didn't have any live bait for the ocean. I wish I had some sea worms or some menhaden or something to try, but I didn't. But this is a great thing. It also shows like the condition is like you can, it's either paved or dirt or gravel, and it also has a usable. It also states if it's usable during the tide, so some things aren't usable during the tide, it's like a, a weird pier and when the tide goes out it may be so far away from the water if you can't even cast that far, you might be casting onto shore still. <laughs> there are some places like that. Um, what else is in here? It also talks about commonly caught species and and like the, your area. Here's the cod and the haddock, I've caught lots of those. The cuss, pollock, halibut, this crazy wolf fish. Never seen that before. Flounders, mackerel, tuna, bonito. Oh, so delicious. And here's the mystical striped bass, the beautiful black bass, and the delicious tautog. And this is cuffing. It's bluefish and stuff. You know, we all these things. But uh, there's so many cool things in here. Oh, yeah, here's another one. The saltwater fish availability calendar. It tells you when things are like in season where you can actually catch them, which is like the yellow, and then the red is when it's red hot fishing time for that particular species. So right now it is um well it's June first, isn't it? Yes. Uh a land cod are hot. Uh the bluefish are hot, the haddock are hot, the mackerel are hot, the striped bass are, the striped bass are hot. Keep hearing about that more and more. But, you know, getting it from shore, I might have to go back to places like Castle Island or, or Deer Island or any place in the Boston Harbor that's not next or on the city. We'll just, you know, get a boat. And what else is cool? Oh, that looks like the Tata and Winter Flounder are just uh, trailing off. That doesn't mean they aren't there, and it doesn't mean you can't catch them. It just means that at this particular time, it's the best. And the white is good, and I mean, and the yellow is good, and the white is poor. So, you know, you might catch a striped bass all year long, but if you want the big boys, or the ones, or when they're like, you know, if you're in mass, Stay in the red. Now, I'm not sure if this is uh, this is the Massachusetts Saltwater Magazine that's provided free from the uh, the Marine Division of Fisheries. I'm not sure if every state does this, but I went down to Florida and they had the same thing. So I've seen it in Virginia too. Some other states I can't quite recollect. Rhode Island, Maine, yeah, they do it too. So I would suspect most places would do this. This is the saltwater one. So if you're landlocked. 
there are fresh warrior ones too, but I don't I'm not sure if they go through as much detail as this because in freshwater the fish can't go anywhere. They're there to stay. Saltwater, they come and they go. Okay, next. Before this gets too long. Which it already is. You know. Get some more Berkeley Power Bait worms. I just got this. Didn't even realize I had the other one, but I love this uh the like pumpkin seed color. It's just, it just works everywhere. Got bobbers galore. Why am I buying all this stuff? Got my katsu hooks. More steel worm weights. Eagle claw. Classic. They never go bad. Try your best not to lose them in the water. Oh, and whoops, I thought I my first came here, not my first came here, but recently, I heard about all the flounder, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to catch all the flounder, they're so delicious, I can't wait to catch them, so I bought some stuff preemptively, not knowing that getting to them would require at least a boat or a kayak to do the flatbeds that are, like, I think here at Gloucester, here at Gloucester, I never actually got around to it, so this, this is a good thing to use for, like, a, a sea worm, has a spinner in there to attract them from the ground. It spits up some dirt, makes some sound. Apparently, it's important for them. This is one I think, yes, it's supposed to be more like a squid. You can add squid to it, which is an attractant, and it extends the base so you can get the the, uh, the larger fluke slash flounder. And this is another one like that. I the first one. Okay, yes, the last thing I want to talk about in here, my bad advice, is the 2000, well, this is 2016, but I should get the newer one. But this basically shows all the tides, and it's given to you by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisheries. So any state that has um, ocean access should have something like this from the Division of Marine Fisheries. I believe I got this from one of the fishing stores, so not all of them have it. This shows the address, and I think I might be able to actually just take the local subway over there. And I might do that soon to see what they have available, maybe talk to some people about uh, everything, and maybe my, web my website, and let them know what I'm trying to do and how I can help out. So what this shows is the tides, and the times, a.m., p.m., and the date for all of them. For all the, uh, I should all the nuts. Is it open up? Oh wait, wait. Is this? this is this is just for for summer. But they do have other times, and it says right here that it's for Boston Harbor, and then it gives you plus and minuses for different areas along the shore. Like if you know about Boston, there's the Boston Harbor, and then there's a there's Plymouth and Provincetown down in the Cape Cod. Then there's a there's Hull that sticks out and Gloucester up north. And there's the Cape Cod Canal where all the guys line up to the striped bass coming down in the middle, which is Cape Cod Canal is basically a, what makes Cape Cod sort of an island. And it comes right through the state and makes like a looks like a glacier just cut through there. A long, long, long time ago, and the fish just rip through there and, and just capture and pin bait fish. And the fishermen just line the shore to a point where they like are like on top of each other. And I hear a lot of complaining online about that. And but the fishing is so good at certain points, it's worth it. But I haven't actually done that yet, and getting down there is a little tough. It's not as Closest fishing from Mark, because <laughs> I don't live, I don't live there. Um, but this is a great, a great thing to have. I'm going to keep that in a better place, or I mean, I'm going to get the newer one. Okay, now I'm going to finish off with uh, with my rod and reels that I have for various things, and yeah, that'll be it. So, number one, this is something you've seen already, which is the first fishing rod I used. 
when I started this site and then started making videos. This is this uh, The Doc Demon by Zepco. It looks small, but man, this thing is dangerous. It can do anything. It, it will bend right over. I did it on a uh, several pound bass, and then my son caught like a two pounder and was like having a having a great time and I wanted to get a telescoping rod that was this length but then it would have to have sections that were this small so that's the reason why that one has a long shaft so it can hold that six feet of a uh, of length and something compact but this is basically all you need to get started it's very cheap very affordable it holds up I think my son got this when he was just turned two, and then he caught his first fish, first fish when he was two and a quarter. Younger than me. I was three. So I was like, wow, you beat me. Hopefully, hopefully that's, uh, you know, that would come to trend. You always want your, your children to do better than you. So, this is that. Next is this puppy. It's a South Bend uh, rod. I actually got this in Tampa, Florida. I was there on vacation and was looking for a rod. So I had a place on the beach, a little condo, and I saw I could just walk out and catch fish like everybody I saw on the beach doing. And I was like, oh, let me go see if I can get a, get a rod and reel or something. Like, or rent one, you know. Renting one was like, 40 bucks a day I'm like oh, like all right I guess I'll do that you know I'm tired out but then I went there and they had some very nice people at the fish shop and they said hey you can just buy a ocean you know capable fishing rod combo for 18 bucks instead of paying double to rent one and have to give it back and hopefully you don't damage it or you know get fish guts inside of the uh the whatever and then they have to do a warranty claim hmm. So, you know, I got another fishing rod. <laughs> uh, you know, thankfully I didn't have to explain to my wife. You know, she was like, it was cheaper. So that's the deal. And I got something new. Yay. So uh, recently I went to the, the Castle Island, which is on the ocean. And I thought I pulled out this lipless crankbait, which I've caught many a uh, smaller striper on. I might, I might, uh, might get lucky, but nothing happened. And this is filled with monofilament. monofilament. Not even sure what test it is. This came with it, but uh, I think it's like ten or twelve. Yeah, it's like ten, and you know this works out. And I traveled with it. I didn't want it to separate, so I actually took my bike uh, leg strap, which keeps your the bottom of your pants from getting caught in your your um, the chain ring. Nobody likes that if you're ever in the bike. It's not good, and but it keeps rods together as well. I'm sure they have something made to specifically do that. And this is the oldest rod reel I have. It's a uh, Shakespeare early stick. And oh man, this thing is a beast. I've bent this thing all the way over on a, on a sheep's head, which I got like a special certificate from because it was within a certain um, weight from the world record. I think it's, if it's within like 5% within your state record, you can get a nice little plaque. And I don't even know why I do that. But it's, it's somewhere amongst all of my junk. I think everybody has a lot of junk. And this is my Abu Garcia Ambassador 6500 C3 reel. And I've had this since I was in high school. And I have so many, so many nights like catching striped bass and catfish and but mostly striped bass and going to uh, going to the ocean some weekends with friends and just like catching striped bass and and uh, spade fish and I wasn't expecting it. Sheep said of uh, how how big was it? About thirteen pounds, thir thirteen something. And wow, this is held up. And then I haven't done any maintenance to this Abu Garcia at all. I've, I don't think I've ever opened it. 
the, scr the screws look a little rusted, but this thing is like, yeah, it's it's like 20 years old. It's a 20 year old reel. It's still holding up. It still works. It's still taut. I just need to shine up a little bit, and it, the striped bass will be hurting once again. So I I can't I can't recommend more getting an ugly stick. I believe they still sell these, and they actually do perform as they state and as advertised. Two. Always, always have an extra rod just hanging around. You know, why not? Just have one, you know. This is an eagle claw. It was on a, I think it was the original rod that came with the I got for the uh, the Abu Garcia on the uh, telescoping one, but I can't fit it in my bag, so I took it off and I got a telescoping rod. So if anything happens, got a backup. Now it won't fit in the camera, but this is my surf rod slash mega pier fishing rod. You know, a little over overzealous here. It works, you know. It's ginormous. I'm about to hit something with this. But, uh, this basically is all you need. This is an Okuma Reel. It's high quality. Got it for like 70 bucks from uh, the local bait shop. You can free bail and open bail. You can tighten the tensioner. Just flip it. I mean, this this is a tightened tensioner. And this is, uh, I actually forgotten. But, Thankfully, I still have the box. I can relearn it, but it takes about three seconds to figure out what it does. And this is just a regular, like Shakespeare, big water uh, rod. And the, the original one that I I had, I broke the reel, and then I got then I got another reel that was another reel that was weaker. And what did I catch? Ugh, I caught a taw tog and then snapped that rod. I mean, talk about crap. I got it from a retail store, which I won't name, and I'll never buy from there again, or any other retail store. If you want a good fishing rod and reel combo, go to your local fishing shop or bait shop or whatever you call it where you are and get something of decent quality. It doesn't have to be super high like G. Loomis, though we would all, we would all love one. But you don't need all that. So, when I do some episodes on surf fishing, maybe on the weekend or on those days after work where you have some extra time and, and a dust comes and the fish start biting, I'm going to have to find a way to get this on my bike. I've seen people do it in North Carolina. They've put, in, they've put a several, several fishing rods on the cars and on their bikes, they, they just make it happen. And they're, they're real uh, maestros with, uh, with space and transportation, but I'm gonna keep learning. We're gonna get there. So, oh, one last thing. Fishing reel I have not used because it's made for trawling. Trawling for, well, striped bass is one of the things, but you could trawl for many things like cobia sharks, uh, really anything, large salmon, maybe even halibut or something, but oh man, this thing is so sweet, let me just close it first, let me show you, it's an Abu Garcia Ambassador BG9000, and stay state, it's world class quality, I just like Abu Garcia, you know, and look at this thing, Beautiful. Never used it. Got it as a gift, but never had a trawling rod to put it on, and never had a boat to drag it. So it's just great. Works fine. It's been sitting in the box for a while, but it's like nothing's happened. And you know, look at the styles, the etching. Nice to lock in. And then it unlocks. That's a tightener. It's it's just a high quality, 
high quality item and I believe you should use the best you can afford for your good stuff and then you can have some stuff that isn't so good and you can, you can throw it around and throw it in your backpack and you know catch the random touch but when you're really out there tackling some big game or you're in like a kind of a harsh environment on the ocean or on the river you should have some good quality gear that won't break down on you when you need it you have that big fish on you've been waiting for a fish like this for years and you've got that sucker that's hooked in and you're pulling him in and he gets next to the boat and what happens oh a rod breaks your wheel spool this snaps and this releases this bird nest Ooh, what what is this you know get high quality stuff and you won't have these problems you have problems like you didn't tie a good knot, or the, maybe the you didn't buy a good hook, which you can buy a good hook too. So that is it for tonight. This is let me see a 41 minute uh, video, which I wasn't planning on doing. But if you enjoy this, you know, give us uh, give the uh, YouTube channel a like, or you know, make a comment if you have an idea of something else you would like to learn from me or something I should make a video about either here in my little uh, test studios or out in the water and also visit the website fishingnetwork.com and once I've completed it which I've gotten very close is download my fishing network process checklist which will show you how you can get in the water and what you need to do like preparation travel um, all the lures and bait you need to do, all the kind of thinking you have to do about timing and dealing with situations and etc. etc. I have uh, done a bit of research and test with this kind of a uh, thing and I believe that it might be useful to you. So it's a free download just uh, provide your email address and you can have uh, it right on your computer. So thank you and good night.